So by now you guys have probably watched my full Redline review on the 2016 Civic Sedan and 2016 Civic Coupe. Now, when I filmed those videos, I was actually at a media drive that uh, is for journalists, and I have to say, those media drives, as fun as they are, can be extremely time restrictive. Um, really for me to show you guys the best way, or at least the full aspects of any car, is for me to get it for a week to test, um, so I can actually drive it in rush hour traffic, I can drive it on long trips, I can basically drive it how you guys would drive it on your everyday commute to work. Um, so t Honda has luckily loaned me one of the first 2016 Civic Coupes in my area. In fact, this new Civic Coupe, as you guys remember from my uh, Civic Coupe review, just went on sale in March. So I'm pretty excited to be one of the first people to get to test this car. Let me show you guys just a quick short take. Um, since a lot of you have been asking me, can you do a little bit shorter videos? I thought I'd try something a little new and show you guys a quick over overview of the 2016 Honda Civic Coupe. So let's take a look and let's go. Now, if you guys remember, the touring model that I'm in basically comes with Honda's push button start with uh, remote access, intelligent access. It also gives you a uh, remote start, um, which is standard on the EXT and up models. Now, when I drove the Civic Coupe, I was in San Diego, which was a beautiful area. In fact, one day I'm kind of hoping that I could uh, relocate to the West Coast. It's been my dream to actually move out there. I've been basically on the East Coast my whole life. Now, um, two months ago is when I drove the Civic. Um, it still pretty much impresses me uh, to this day, but it's I have to say, driving the car uh, in areas local to me uh, makes it feel a little bit more different. I can definitely get a feel more for what this car uh, is all about when you get it out in the real world. Now luckily, I just showed you guys or at least I just had uh, the latest Mazda 3 to test. Uh, last week I had that Hyundai Veloster Turbo R-Spec. Both of those cars compete very closely with the all-new Civic. Now, Honda, as I said before, benchmarked the um, Audi A3 when they were designing the Civic, and the Coupe um, is supposed to, supposed to be even more sporty uh, than the sedan. And right off the bat, I'm always reminded just how nice this new Civic Coupe is to drive. Now, of course, um, EXT and up trims will come standard with the 1.5 liter Earth Dreams turbocharged direct injection single scroll turbo four cylinder, which puts out about 18 pounds of boost. Pretty good, uh, pretty good amount of boost. This put, produce, puts out 174 horsepower, 162 pound feet of torque. By now, you guys should know this is the up level motor uh, in the all new Civic. And I have to say, it's still great. Um, the CVT, while of course I hate CVTs, works extremely well with this turbocharged engine and the car has a lot of mid-range torque, which is not something Hondas are known for. Now, zero to 60 times are definitely an interesting aspect of the all new Civic Turbo. I've seen it as quick as 6.6 .6 seconds from car and driver. That was the most recent number I've seen. Uh, Motor Trend tested it at like 7.2. Really, you're gonna expect uh, in that range in the real world, and the Civic Turbo certainly feels that quick. In fact, if you look at the numbers, this car is almost as quick as last year's uh, Civic Si with the 2.4 liter six-speed manual combo. So of course, expectations are extremely high uh, for the Civic Si and Type R uh, when Honda plans to release those vehicles for the 2017 model year. So I'm expecting by late uh, this year. Now, of course, getting on these local roads that I know very well, curvy roads, the Civic has an excellent chassis. This is an all new chassis for 2016. As I said, it's stronger, it's lighter, and it's gonna be the, I, the really good bones for an all new SI and Type R. The steering is electric, but it has a lot of uh, precision. It's quick reacting. The car, of course, has body lean, but the suspension is very compliant yet firm, uh, and it's relatively quiet in here. Civics have always been noisy, they've always been a little bit toy-like, and this one feels much more grown up. It feels much more mature, much more premium. In fact, looking at this interior, um, 
just going over a quick over glance, it really honestly is very Acura like in here, especially when you go for the top trim touring. You have this tablet like style uh, seven inch screen highlighting the center stack. And of course, it has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, it has Honda Link, their latest infotainment system. I'm still hateful of the fact that there's no volume knob here and there's pretty much no buttons or knobs for the audio portion. But for the climate control, you do have dual zone automatic, which is the first time it's available on the Civic. Most higher trims will come with that feature. Um, and overall, the materials in her are good. The steering feels really good in your hands. The leather is nice and smooth, has nice bolstering extensions. The materials on the dash are very good. I like the aluminum trim. The seats um, have these really interesting two-tone look. It's very premium in here. It, it almost has this little carbon fiber-like look in the middle of the seat on the leather portion here. It's interesting, uh, and it's certainly uh, an interior that will fool you into thinking you bought a much more expensive car, which is not something that the Civic has been able to do. That's always been a trait of a Volkswagen Golf or a Mazda 3. Now Honda can happily lay claim in offering an interior that really makes you think you bought a lot more car than you actually did. Now getting up onto these highway cruising speeds here, um, this is really where you're going to notice the difference if you guys go for the 2.0-liter base engine or the turbo. The turbo has just a lot more mid-range grunt. Um, it'll get you up to higher speeds much more effortlessly. Uh, basically like a bigger car, more powerful premium car. And that's something that the Civic uh, Turbo certainly is excelling at, is making you think that you bought an Accord Coupe. Although it doesn't feel as fat, as heavy, uh, it still feels um, compact and nimble, just a lot more solidly built. Now, of course, with the Touring trim on the Coupe, you're going to get basically Honda Sensing, uh, which is their adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, um, a collision mitigation braking, and you know, this is basically one of the first times you're, you can get you know, this kind of technology on a Civic. This car will happily drive itself down the road. It'll keep in the lane for you. It'll follow the car in front to a full stop, which is something that the Acura ILX does not offer, which is weird because you think you would have that on the premium version of this car, um, but Honda gives it to you. And what's interesting about the Coupe is you can't get Honda Sensing as an individual package like you can on the sedan. You have to buy a top trim touring like this one uh, to get that full suite of uh, adaptive cruise control, that safety technology and all that fun stuff. Now, as you guys heard on the highway, this car remains relatively quiet. The seats are really comfortable. Visibility in here is excellent. Huge side mirrors, good view out of the back. Um, and this car just feels incredibly spacious, incredibly roomy. Uh, so those of you who are tall, who are who are rather large, wide, um, you're gonna fit in this car really well. In fact, the back seat of the Civic Coupe is surprising. Even though the headroom is a little bit hateful, uh, for me, it doesn't really bother me because I'm short. Um, the leg room is plentiful and there's a nearly flat floor in the center, so you can actually put um, three people in the back seat, smaller people, of course, not ones that are not incredibly tall. Now, fuel economy is another thing. I haven't really had a chance to test uh, the Civic Turbo in the real world on longer trips, and I have, I'm happy to say fuel economy is very impressive. I got the best numbers I've ever gotten in any uh, in this compact class. Around the city, I got around 30 miles to the gallon around DC, uh, and stop and go traffic. You guys know the traffic here is hateful. Um, on the highway, I was able to beat the APA numbers of 41 MPG. I got 44 miles to the gallon in pure highway driving. That's when I left the cruise control uh, to its business to follow the car in front of me. That's impressive uh, for this high-strung 1.5 turbo. You can credit that to the CVT. Um, it's very efficient, even though it's a kind of a hateful transmission for enthusiasts. Uh, you can't argue with its efficiency and its ability uh, to put this engine basically in the meat of its power brand uh, whenever you uh, get it going. Now, I have a couple of gremlins with the Civic, of course, even though uh, the CVT is good. I do notice an initial lag off the line when you first hit the throttle. Um, it's kind of almost like the car's thinking what to do. It's like maybe a two second lag and then all of a sudden, boom, you're hit with that wallop of torque, which is weird because you don't expect that with a Honda. Um, I, I'm missing the paddle shifters. The old uh, Civic Coupe had paddle shifters when you got the higher trims with the CVT. Of course, Honda gives you a sport mode to compensate for that, but I still would occasionally like to see uh, a manual shift mode uh, just because I like to choose my own gears. A uh, six-speed manual, of course, is coming. I, I've driven a prototype model uh, when I was in San Diego, which was excellent. So those of you who want the stick, I would highly recommend waiting for that. And then, of course, another thing I'm complaining about, the Civic has gotten pretty expensive price-wise, and uh, the SI and the Type R is 
basically still a few more months away, so you guys gotta continue to be patient. Now, regarding the pricing of the coupe, uh, it starts at just over $19,000 for the base LX model, uh, which is about $400 more than the sedan, um, which is interesting because the old coupe, I believe, used to be $200 cheaper, so Honda's now making you pay a little bit more for the style, even though you get less functionality. Uh, luckily, the coupe, um, doesn't really lose much in terms of functionality. As I mentioned, the big back seat, the trunk is relatively huge. It's about 14 and a half cubic feet of space, which is two cubic feet more uh, than the old coupe. So you have a usable trunk, usable back seat. It's still a really practical car. Um, only thing you're really using are the usability of the rear doors, but um, and, but you do get a lot more uh, style. Now, of course, my touring model, let's going back to the pricing, is a lot more expensive than the $19,000 price tag of the LX model. Uh, this one stickers for just under 27. It's 26.9. Um, which is actually a little bit cheaper than the sedan. You do lose a couple of features versus the sedan. I don't have the power driver's seat, or the eight-way power. Uh, you lose the four-way power on the passenger side as well. Um, the sedan kind of gives you that because they're uh, they're they're going with more of a luxury theme. This is more of a sportier theme. I don't really know why Honda takes away the power driver's seat. I would like to have. Uh, that feature to be honest. But anyways, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed my quick short take of the 2016 Honda Civic Coupe. I have to say, if you guys are looking for a sporty coupe, uh, sporty compact coupe, um, the TC is dead for 2017. The Kia Forte Coupe, I mean, come on, who, who really buys one of those? So really, the Civic Coupe is in a class of its own, and you're going to get one of the most technologically advanced cars, uh, the most premium cars, one of the roomiest cabins in the compact class, and excellent fuel economy and strong performance to boot. So really, it's a kind of a no-brainer if you guys want uh, a sporty or at least a compact two-door coupe like this. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you're looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram, like us on Facebook, uh, keep subscribed to the YouTube channel if you want to keep watching all the latest reviews from us. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.